Good morning. I'm very happy to have the like launching Chain Fusion. Really, this is our first Chain Fusion event. I mean, Chain Fusion so, so sort of started like a way back, maybe three years ago. Even when we were thinking, well, why, why don't we have like Bitcoin on the internet computer? Wouldn't it be great if ICP smart contracts could also hold Bitcoin? And we started about thinking how to get that happen. This is a bit of feedback here. Uh, so how, how to make that happen, and, and so on and so forth. You might have seen the video for, before about the whole Chain Fusion evolution. And here we are today, Chain Fusion. So I mean, why, why Chain Fusion? I mean, there's all these other chains out there, and uh, a lot of them have like different properties. Some are nice, some have like shortcomings, some cons, and pros. And the idea of Chain Fusion is really like, uh, let's develop or build with all of those chains. Let's uh, ICP be a place where everybody can write smart cons and contracts that can interact with these chains. But also the idea here is to bring properties of uh, ITP to all of those other chains. So for instance, like, like Web2 experience, uh, computational power, on-chain storage, governance applications, Web2 interactions, all of that is what ICP can offer to other chains via Chain Fusion. On the other hand, of course, we also hope that like, the ecosystem from these other chains also come and find ICP a nice place to build. So we hope to also uh, have some benefits here for, for ICP. Uh, of course, different chains have different properties, and here's just like a brief uh, rundown of that. Uh, like, as you all know, like a lot of chains are really synchronous, so that's very nice for DeFi because it's, it's easier to program as well. Whereas on ICP, uh, smart contracts are, are asynchronous because otherwise you can't scale, right? If you want to scale, you really have to have a distributed system. If you have a distributed system, it has to be uh, asynchronous by, by design. There's other differences, like how, how people pay for gas, either user pay for gas if they use the system, which is not really usability, whereas on ICP, we really care a lot about the usability, so that code plays, pays for the, uh, for the gas, users just can go with web uh, experience. Uh, also, price varies different. The uh, model underlying, it's like proof of stake or proof of work for some of them. On ICP, it's like proof of useful work, we like call that. Different uh, security, like sort of assumptions or philosophies as well, to, to some extent. That also leads to like maybe lots of replication, let's say on an Ethereum chain, that of course also like uh, adds to, to the price, whereas on ICP with the heuristic decentralization, uh, you can have like, much lower replication. That also means like things are faster, uh, faster and cheaper. So well, what is Chain Fusion? Uh, Chain Fusion is really two parts. It has like the technical foundation on ICP, the protocol parts, change the signature, network integration, and then of course all the applications on top of ICP that help to make Chain, Chain Fusion nice. So we have like twins, chain key tokens, twins to Bitcoin, Ethereum, ERC20 tokens. We'll have Solana very soon. Ecosystem apps like OpenChat where you can transact those things. So it's really both of these pillars that uh, make chain fusion that are, should make it attractive to other chains here. And like the rest of the day, we mostly talk about, about the left-hand side here. So today, well, well, like in, in this intro, I want to focus a bit on, on the right-hand side. And so you're right. So, so chain fusion is really like on the protocol level. It's uh, chain key signatures, net key integrations, uh, network integrations. I'll talk some more about that in the, in the coming slide. On the other hand, we have like this uh, ICP smart contract properties, like serving, the serving uh, web assets directly to users' browsers. So here is like a picture of OISI.com, it's like a multi-chain wallet, which to me is like a, a nice demonstration of how multi-chain actions can happen, like chain fusion life, if you want. Other properties like the, talking to the rest of the world, Web2 native, so that's something like uh, is very attractive uh, to other chains as well to use. Uh, indeed, like uh, ISP smart contracts, are like, like a different piece of smart contracts, blockchain on steroids, I mean, like you can have like much more storage. So if you think blockchain, if you think smart contract, rethink that for ICP, it's very different. Uh, 400 gigabyte data storage now in a smart contract. That's just a limitation right now, but that, that's also something that can easily be pushed. 
uh, more memory, four gigabyte memory, not something like only 4K, WebAssembly, so we can program it in, in like many languages that compile to WebAssembly. Uh, I guess, uh, again, for usability, reverse gas is really a, a key property of ICP smart contracts. Uh, they can run in parallel, they can do multi-block uh, transactions, uh, said already they can interact with the, the rest of the world via HTTP surf web. Uh, or another use case we got to discuss is like DAO automation. Uh, automation, you can have like a DAO on ICP that controls uh, smart contract on Ethereum chains or other chains. Um, so, but let's uh, talk a bit about the foundation here. Like obviously I get excited about the, the, that a lot, and so I want to share some of that excitement with you. Uh, let's look at the chain key signatures first. So chain key signatures allow ICP smart contracts to own a public key, to, own, uh, to control a public key, and that public key can be an Ethereum public key, it can be a Bitcoin public key, it can be a Solana public key. So with that, they can actually natively own tokens on other chains. So now you can build smart contracts that can transact automatically Bitcoin, you know, or you can sell Bitcoin and buy Ethereum with a smart contract. You can uh, sort of work balances across these chains, like tons of application. And uh, so they can sign transactions, submit them to, to other chains, we HTTP out calls. And the, the way this works is really like with uh, threshold signing, so like the, the nodes of an ICP net, the subnet, collaborate together to produce a signature with respect to that public key. So it's like network costed it, if you want. Of course, there's more to that. It's not only signing. You need to generate those, those keys. You need to set them up. You need to reshare those keys. So there's a lot of uh, cryptography going uh, uh, around here underneath the surface. But really, all you need to know is like ICP smart contract can have public keys for different other chains and, and use them and transact with these chains. Now that means that so they can actually write to other chains, right? they can sign transactions, but it's also important to read from other chains because otherwise you can't really interact with them. And so that's why, oh, sorry. Uh, right, signature schemes that we support here is like ECDSA that's live since, since like uh, one and a half years, so that allows you to do Bitcoin. Schnorr, we have a test case live just now, so you can also do ordinals and you can do like other chains that have Schnorrs. And then EDDSA is, is coming very soon next. It's like a minor modification of Schnorr, so that's coming, coming, soon very, c coming very soon. That will allow you to also transact Solana uh, transactions. Okay, but, but as I said, like, it's not fun if you can only write. You also want to read. You want to interact with these, ch these chains. And to this end, to make that trustless as well, we integrate, uh, like ICP integrates with other networks. Uh, there's like two kinds of doing that. One is like direct network level integration, and the other kind is like with a de decentralized RPC calls to other uh, other chains. Uh, the direct network integration like uh, is built for Bitcoin, so where ICP nodes also have like light clients of the Bitcoin network. All the nodes pull in that blocks from from Bitcoin and then uh, analyze those blocks and uh, provide like the UTXO sets through consensus to ICP smart contract. So now as an ICP, ICP smart contract, you can access the UTXO set, the latest UTXO set for, from Bitcoin. You can manage your Bitcoin like that. So it's like you can read from Bitcoin in, in a completely uh, trustless manner, in a decentralized manner. For other, uh, for other chains, we are using HTTP out calls, so ICP smart contract can call, make HTTP calls to, to other, other servers. In particular, they can make HTTP out calls to RPC provider for like EVM chains or like any other chain, really. And the idea here is that then all the replicas make that call separately, get the result, run the results through consensus, and then pass it back up to, uh, to smart contracts. So that, all, that guarantees that now actually the result is trustworthy because now you have like 13, 40, whatever many uh, instances that call out to, to an address and then feed that back. So you can do that in a trustworthy way. Now, of course, for RPC providers, if you would just call one provider, you would still have a single point of failure. So that's why uh, for the decentralized RPC integration with other networks, you really call many RPC, RPC provider, uh, get the results there again, uh, compare them, and if they're all, all the same, then, then you're good to go. So this is also like makes it um, uh, uh, secure against uh, like single party failure, but also you get like if somebody tries to uh, give you different results, you can also deal with that. 
Um, Right, and the, the rest, uh, uh, here is like the applications, but the, really the, I won't cover that because that's what the whole day is about. It's about these applications. So uh, yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, let's have an exciting day discussing chain fusion technologies, applications. Happy Chain Fusion Day. Thank you.